Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today we're going to be putting a new blade on this Qualcast Law Mower. Hey folks, thanks for joining us back in the workshop again. So today, as I said, we're gonna be putting a new blade on this Qualcast lawnmower. Now, you might have seen me servicing this Qualcast lawnmower with a Briggs & Stratton 450 series engine on, on a previous video. Um, we got everything on there, it was all great, but the blade's a bit dodgy, it's rusted up, so I thought, you know what, I'll just buy a new one instead of messing around sharpening it, and we'll try and get it changed. So. We've drilled, we've, we've drilled, we haven't drilled anything. We've drained the oil down. That's what we, not the oil, the petrol even. My goodness, what am I doing today? I'm so excited to change this blade and get out cutting some grass. I'm just getting everything all back to front. Right, we've drained the fuel out so we won't have any leaks. So we'll tip this over and we'll put it back against the wall so it sits nice and solid, nice and firm. Yeah, it's there. We've got the blade underneath here. You can see it's all a bit worn on the edges, a bit battered, a bit scuffed. Now you can get this off and you can sharpen the blade and it'd be great if you're just doing little gardens and things, backwards and forwards. You'll get some vibration on there. No matter how well you sharpen it, you always get a bit of vibration unless you can do it with a machine and get it perfectly balanced. So it doesn't really matter if you're in a garden, you're using it for half hour a week, whatever it is. But if we're using it for long spells, it's going to cause a lot of hand arm vibration and we don't really want that and it shakes the engine to pieces too. So what we'll do, we'll just change the blade then, then we can put an edge on this one and we know if we've ever got any bother, we can always got a spare blade on the shelf and we can just pop that on and use it then. So to get this off, as you can see, we've just got one bolt in the middle. Now that one bolt in the middle goes through there and you've probably seen on a lot of mowers, there's a bolt goes through that side and a bolt goes through that side. But on this one, if you look carefully, it's actually a half moon. So you've got a half moon or a semicircle there and a, and a hole there. A single bolt goes through the middle and you can only get the blade on one way. It's a good idea really. You can only get the blade on one way because it has to fit in that semicircle and in the hole the other side. So it's gonna be a perfect fit every single time. So what we'll do now, we'll try and get this off. I've got some um, oil here, some release oil or penetrative oil, and you can spray that in there and try and get it in and around. We haven't really got time for that to work because you need to spray it on and leave it for a while. I'll have a go. If it doesn't work with a gun, we can use some of that and we'll leave it overnight and come back tomorrow and carry on. But I've got an impact gun here, and this is an impact driver, not an impact wrench. The reason why we use an impact driver is because it's nice and soft and gentle. We use an impact wrench. It's got a, so much torque in there. We could put it on that and if that bolt is rusted in solid, we will just twist the end off and then we'll be drilling out and tapping it back in and it'll take forever, really, really forever. So with this, there's not enough torque in here to twist that off, right? There's not enough torque. It's a 15 mil socket that fits on the end. So there's not enough to twist that off, but there is a lot of vibration to go down the length of that bolt and shake all of that rust free. So that's why we use a, a driver and not a wrench on these smaller ones. Now, I've got to put a load of extensions on here to get this the right size. I know it's not ideal, but it will work. So we'll put it to undo. So it's anti-clockwise, lefty loosey, righty tighty. We'll put that on and then hold this tight, grip it tight. Put a block of wood there if you want, depending on how, how tight you think it'll be. And then we can just rattle the gun, nice and slow and steady. There you go, it's starting to go. Do you see that? Just starting to move. And how about that then? We've got it off in one, blimey. I don't think that's ever been off from new. Look at that, we've still got the paint on the back. So it's a bit battered compared to the, uh, the new blade. In fact, it's quite battered actually. I'll just get a little close up of those side by side so you can see how they go. And then we've got the bolt here and there's quite a lot of corrosion on this bolt and it goes up into there, into the drive system and this turns and moves the whole thing. 
So this is quite important. So what we'll do, instead of putting some release oil on there, we'll put on some copper grease. Now I'm sure I've got some round here somewhere. That's it. We've got some copper grease here and it's anti-seize copper grease and it basically lubricates anti-seize compound for use on all metal parts. And it got some, it's like a thin oil with some copper beads in there and it just goes in and it just stops the water ingress and everything into the thread and makes it easier to undo next time we change it so we won't have these problems. So I'll just give that a little spray. There we go, we've got some on there. Now all we have to do is fit the blade. So this is going a lot better than I ever imagined, I'll tell you. Now we'll put this on there. So that fits on, let's have a look, does it fit? Hold on, see how it goes. Can only go on one way. There's, there's, no, there's no two ways of getting it off, is there? So only one way of getting it on, again. I think there's just a little nick being taken out of these at the at the bottom, so it might be a bit stiff to get on. Right then, so took a bit of jigging around to get that on there. The uh, the centre boss is a bit worn um, from like it's the original one, so they get a bit worn on there. So. We just got to jig the blade around a bit until we could get it in. Now sprayed it up with some release spray, um, some copper grease, so that should be easy to get undone uh, next time somebody does it. If it's not me, and then if it is stuck ever, that's the stuff to use. The bulldog release spray, it's the business. Love it. We use it on all the mowers that we do. You often see stuff. I don't know if you watch videos. It'd be on the bench behind us. We spray stuff up and then just leave it on there for 12 or 24 hours, let it work its magic and then it's easy, easy to get undone. Right, so with this, I've tightened it up as much as I can with my finger and then you think you're gonna tighten it back up with this, but you don't. Don't ever tighten stuff up with these. There's no point in tightening them up with the impact guns. You're just gonna cause yourself some bother. You'll screw it in too far and you'll damage the threads or you'll stretch the, the bolt in there or something. Just get yourself a little ratchet and put that on. Now, you understand that that's holding it in the middle and connecting it to the drive, but these two here, these are keys, and these keyways, these lock the blade in and keep it going, so they have to be tied up against there, right? And when they're tied up against there, it stops the blade spinning round on itself. If you just had one connection point in the middle, it'd spin round on its own, but having these in either side, they lock it up. They lock it up, right. So we'll tighten that up then and I'll make sure it's pretty tight really because you don't want a blade working itself loose, do you? Let's give it a bit more. That's it. Now, when you're changing these, like with this one, I can see it's starting to round off on the corner. So whether somebody had a go at it beforehand and couldn't do it, and that's why it ended up with us or not, I don't know. But when they start to round off like that, you need to get onto your local supplier and order a new one of these to put in there. Now, they're normally specialist ones, they're not a predetermined length, and you'll probably do some damage if you just put anything else in there. So if it's a couple of pounds for the correct bolt, just order one, please, and you'll save yourself a lot of time and hassle in the long run. Now, I just make sure that's tight enough. Move my hand down to the end of the ratchet. Notice I'm using a small ratchet, yeah? Not a great big one. We don't want to put loads of pressure in and damage stuff up there. Just enough to tighten it up. That's solid in there, it's not going anywhere, and that's the job complete. It's as easy as that, folks, as easy as that. They don't always go to plan, you know, you have a bit of trouble getting them off, but as I said, use a release spray, use an impact driver, not a wrench because you will twist the top off, use a driver, rattle it free. It's the rattling movement that frees them up, not the twisting movement. If you haven't got an impact wrench, you can always grab a hammer, give it a light tap with a hammer, couple of taps at a hammer, try a socket on there, couple of taps again with a hammer. If it doesn't work, turn it one way, turn it the other. You just gotta try and break that rust that's going up there. So there you go, it's all done anyway. I'm happy with that, we've done it. We'll put the mower back up, make sure there's no leaks, we haven't got oil all over the bench or anything. No, everything's great. So then, if you didn't see the full service video, I'll put a card at the end of this one, you can see it. If you found that useful, give me the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, we've got loads of other videos. 
Changing a blade on one of these is pretty simple, same as it is on loads of mowers. It's just finding out how to do it. That's all it is. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jimmy the Mower. I'll catch you on the next one.